In this here video I'm going to be talking about double stop country thirds and it's a beautiful melodic sound and it's an essential sound I think if you're playing country music but I also find myself doing this kind of thing in lots of other styles as well. I've put together a little solo which demonstrates this sound and we're going to be learning that and I'm also going to be giving you a bit of theory, some scales and some exercises to help you understand this sound and enable you to get it into your own playing. So let me start by playing that solo for you. start with a bit of gentle music theory shall we so we're talking about thirds today what are thirds well they are musical intervals so the distance between pairs of musical notes and they're called thirds because those notes are three letters apart in the musical alphabet so for example if we start with a c c d e c to e is a third of one kind or another and you can refine that definition a bit more closely and usually you're going to have a major third or a minor third so usually on the guitar we're going to be playing these thirds on a pair of adjacent strings so let's see how that works uh, i'm going to keep this in the key of c my little solo is in the key of c so let's start by finding the thirds in the key of c major and we're going to harmonize the C major scale in thirds. So why don't we start by finding the C major scale along the length of the B string. And that's straightforward enough. We've got a C note here at the first fret on the B string. Then we just go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then what we're going to do is find the note a third above on the high E string. So still notes from the key, still notes from the C major scale, but we're going to start with an E note here and we're going to go E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And then if we put those two strings together, we've got a series of thirds. And because of the interval structure of the C major scale, we're forced to use two different shapes here. So we've got this shape, where the two notes are just one fret apart, and then we've got this shape, where the notes are two frets apart. So these are major thirds and minor thirds. So C to E, this shape here is a major third, and B to D, for example, is a minor third. So the first thing I'd like you to do is just to get comfortable with that C major scale in thirds, just playing it up and down, getting comfortable with where those major and minor thirds occur. So you play the two notes together at the same time like that. And you can just play it with a single stroke of the pick. Or you can use hybrid picking, so play the B string note with the pick and the high E string note with the middle finger. And you can play the notes at the same time, you can also play them separately. So an exercise that might be helpful is to do something like this. So playing the B string, the E string and then back to the B string again. And once again that works well with hybrid picking. Next we can try doing the same thing on the other possible pairs of strings. So the good news is that for most of these pairs of strings the shapes are exactly the same. So on the D and G strings for example, you've just got to find your C and E jumping off point and it's the same thing. And same thing on the A and D. And the same thing on the low E and A strings. 
And as is often the case on the guitar, the B string screws things up a little bit. So we've got some slightly different shapes on the second and third strings. So we're starting with this shape here. We've got C and E. Both these notes are at the same fret. That's the major third shape. And then the minor third shape, D to F, the notes are one fret apart. So. So we've got the C major scale in thirds on all of the string pairs. Next thing I suggest you do is to try the same thing with the Mixolydian mode. Now the major scale is great but it can sound a little bit sweet and in particular that major seventh doesn't really give you that country sound. So what we can do is just adjust our C major scale. Wherever there's a B we can make it a B flat and we should have the C Mixolydian mode. So let's see how that works. We're going to start with the same shape. And the first four shapes work as usual. Here in the major scale we've got this G and a B but if we flatten that B we have this and then same shape again here with this shape here that's a B and a D if we just flatten that B we've got a B flat and that gives us our mixolydian mode our C mixolydian mode in thirds. And that gives you a slightly bluesy sound which works much better I think in a country context than just using the major scale on its own. So we got some scales, what else can we do to spice things up a little bit further? And one very common device is to throw in some chromatic passing shapes. And a very common country lick would go something like this. So just based on those C major thirds. But between the second and third shapes, I'm just throwing in this chromatic passing double stop. So, and you can really just fill in the gaps in that C major or C mixolydian scale with some of these chromatic passing shapes. And it just adds a lot more interest. Another simple but very effective trick is just to approach some of these shapes from one fret below. So it's another kind of chromatic approach. So if my target is this, C to E shape, then I'm just going to approach from here. One further important thing just before we get onto the solo is that I find it super helpful to relate some of these third shapes to familiar chords and that enables you to find and to use this stuff really easily. So for example this little shape here is a jumping off point for a lot of thirds based licks and I'm just seeing it as part of this C bar chord shape. So it's an A form C chord. There's our little thirds dyad shape. And that's my jumping off point for licks based out of that chord shape. And another good reference point is this E form bar chord and we've got some thirds here. That's on the D and G strings, also on the G and B strings, still just straight out of this chord shape. And also out of the open position C chord as well. Okay let's move on to my little solo then. I'll take you through it and I'll try and describe what's going on in some of these licks. So the chords I'm playing over are C, F and G. So the 1, 4, 5 chords in the key of C. And it's not exactly a 12 bar blues because I'm spending a little bit longer on each of those chords than you would in a simple blues progression. But what I am trying to do is really outline the sound of each of those chords. So I'm playing the changes as they say. So over the C chord I'm thinking about bringing out the sound of the C chord and likewise over the F and the G chords. And what that largely means is that I'm thinking C mixolydian and then F mixolydian and then G mixolydian. 
So phrase by phrase, I think the opening lick was something like this. So this is nice and simple, it's just that C major thirds scale that we discussed at the start of this video. I've just got that little chromatic shape in passing there as well. And the next phrase is kind of an answering phrase to this one. So we're going up to this shape here, it's a G and a B flat, so this is that Mixolydian flat 7 sound. Coming down the Mixolydian scale and then back home again with a little one fret below chromatic approach. Now I think I'm coming down to there, which again is Mixolydian stuff giving you that flat 7 sound. Then we've got a chord change, we're heading to the 4 chord, which is an F, and I'm thinking straight out of the chord shape. I've got this F and A as my jumping off point, and the lick I play is this. And I'm following the chords here, so I'm now thinking F major or F mixolydian, and I've just got that little scale shape there, and I'm playing the notes a bit more separately this time. So going to this shape here, just a little chromatic approach to that. And again that one fret below trick. Then I'm up to the 8th and 10th frets on the B and G strings. So still, still on the F chord here, I'm thinking out of this chord shape, it's F mixolydian. Give that a little bend and I'm resolving to the C chord there so I've got the E and the G notes there that's the third and the fifth. Another little chromatic sidestep move. For the next lick I'm coming down a bit lower so this is still C chord stuff so I've just got thirds on the D and G strings and then I'm just playing some single note stuff so here I'm thinking C minor pentatonic with an added major third so in the key of C you've got this nice minor pentatonic box and you can hammer on from the flat third to the major third so Then we're headed to the 5 chord, which is a G, and I'm coming straight out of the chord shape once again. Just a G mixolydian. And this time I'm trying a little bit of a chicken picking thing, so I'm playing the notes separately and I'm just pulling up on the third string to get that kind of chicken picking sounds. And then for the final lick, it's more of this one fret below chromatic stuff. So just approaching chord tones from one fret below, thinking out of chord shapes. So it's this, and then out of this chord shape. And then some more single note stuff to round off the solo. Just C major pentatonic, and then some bluesy C minor major pentatonic stuff to end. Let's have a slow playthrough of the entire solo.
give you a quick rundown of the gear that I'm using today. Uh, I'm using what has become my default country guitar setup. So it's a Telecaster into a Fender Deluxe. Uh, you really can't go too far wrong if you've got a Telecaster and a Deluxe. And I often get people writing to me asking about how I got particular tones and you know, whether there are any particular tricks or anything like that. And rarely am I using any particular trickery. It's just plugging into the amp and you know, only, only three controls on a Fender Deluxe volume, uh, treble and bass. So volume is on about three, three and a half, and the treble's on four, bass is on five, and, and that's it. That's that's your tone. But having said that, I am using one pedal today, and that is just a bit of compression from the MXR Dynacomp, which is a script logo reissue of one of the 70s ones, I think. So it all sounds like this. <laughs> That's about it for this video. I strongly recommend getting really familiar with these third shapes and learning them on each of the string pairs in all your different keys and then try getting some of these sounds into your own playing, so into your own solos and improvisations. And I hope you have fun with that. If you want tab to my little solo that's going to be up on my Patreon page along with the backing track. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time. <laughs>